Thank you for joining me on this episode of Diaspora Lounge. As you can see, the topic is the state of Nigeria today. I want to talk about the situation right now in the country, the fell prices, the aftermath of the protests. I have a list of things here. The lady who threatened to poison your bars and the reaction of Abika Dabiri, who is uh, representing the government, the diaspora, the issue with religion and all the things that have happened in the past few weeks. Let's talk with a guest that I have behind the scenes here in the studio, Mr. Sisi. And we were supposed to be joined by someone else, but um, they're not here yet. All right, so the fuel, price, the fuel prices increase right after the protests, Mr. Sisi. And the prices of commodities generally, making things very difficult for Nigerians. What does that tell you? The fact that after the protests, instead of things getting better, they seem to have become worse. What does it tell you? Are you one of those who thinks it's just a temporary thing? Are you one of those who thinks that um, this is government trying to balance things, to make things better for the country? How do you see it? Of the world has gone this path before and rebounded. In one year of the Bola Ahmed Tinubu regime, he borrowed more money than Buhari borrowed in eight years. Is that a fact? Or that, that's, you can that's confirm. Not, you, you, not, you, 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 that's you, not quite true. No, it's correct. It's not quite you, true. You, 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 that's you, not exactly true. No, it's true. You can, you can fact check me. Fact check me. No, no, that's, it's not exactly no, true. No, I then. said he, this, this is what he has done. You can fact check me. Now, are, are you not delighted that we are now on the third largest borrower from IMF? It's an accomplishment. That's the direction that Bola Metinu is driving us. He's taking us to Meduguri, close to Sambisa Forest. We can't give him time. Because the more time we give him, the more destruction he's going to cause. to give him time. He has four years. Of course, nobody's struggling his four year mandate with him. But we are saying that this place you are going, and this is what the protesters are saying that this road you are going, you must make a U turn. And citizens have the right. Mm. Citizens even have the right to demand that the president resign. Citizen is a constitutional guaranteed right. Has he gotten to that point? He so showed that he doesn't get to that point. That's why everybody is shouting. You are taking us to Sambisa Forest. Please, Mr. President, make a U-turn. The man says no. That his economic policies are paying, uh, are, are going to yield fruits. And that's why he took almost 100 people to China to go and borrow money. You, uh, uh, someone like me, you, you, you're talking about uh, 20, the next election and what the politicians need to do um, and here is a funny place he has uh, basically defied uh, all economics all world economics there's nothing that has worked in other places that has actually worked in Nigeria. Uh, what will be the reason for that the first case city as well as Dangote refinery and the president Bola Metunubu turning the presidency to a family affairs business stuff well, it's debatable. We can talk about that one later. But to answer to your question about our our government, our 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 leaders, our rulers, it shows that it's either that they're not listening to the people that voted them in, or they don't care. To the price of a fuel. Um, the president has said in China that he's a reformer and he appreciated the work of uh, President Xi Jinping of China. And he said in Nigeria, he's doing a whole lot to reform the situation. And there are those, I mean, a lot, so a few times the president has mentioned that some of the reforms that he's making are going to be painful in the moment, but in the end, it's going to be of benefit to the larger population of Nigerian people. Well, have you seen the delegation of the president to China? Who, who, who goes scalping hand begging to go and beg in China with that kind of delegation? Almost a hundred people went to China with the president. The people that we see. Have you seen the, the plane with which the president went to China? Brand new passenger plane. How do you go? Imagine when, if someone comes to your house to beg for money and he drives in a G wagon. And also, aside driving a G wagon, he comes with a convoy of men. And women 
all acting so busy. Will you borrow such a person money? They, Bola met in Ubu, are you able general, to Bola confirm that the Bola president Bola. went with Bola. 100 people? Are you, I, I've seen the video, almost 100 people. I've seen the video of the almost president. Almost 100 people. No, yes, but, but you, I've seen the video. Uh, you, you, you probably I've need to confirm video. how many I, people I, I there were there. I don't need any I see governors. No, I, have, I, I don't need I any see ministers. Com- Listen, I, 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 I don't need any I don't want us to I be... I seen. I don't want us to... I have seen... To, Listen, to place the context the president, on conjectures. The president went to beg for money in China. No, he went for he a, went a to summit. Beg for money in China. But, but he went for a summit. No. The China Africa summit. The president went to China to beg for money. And he took a delegation of almost 100 people to China. Who does that? He repeat, he did the same thing when he went to Qatar. The Qatari, after all he, the PowerPoint presentation he made, the Qataris, they refused to give him any money. Because these are not stupid people. You cannot go cap in hand begging for money. And you come living extravagant lifestyle on the same trip. So, having said that, number two, you said the president says he's a reformer. What reform? Since this president has came into power over a year ago, this president has back to back destroyed the economy of this country. Which reforms? Okay. I let me take one, one after the other. We you know, they don't care about the people that voted on me because even when you know that another election is coming and you still need the same people again to actually um either vote you in or you buy your way we, we don't know actually we don't really have a proof that the current uh, government put their way in. But either they buy their way in or they... Huh? Maybe it doesn't matter that there will be elections because um, whether people are going to be happy with the government and revote the government in is not really the issue since anyone can apparently make things happen and get the results that they want. It doesn't matter that there will be elections because... Um, whether people are going to be happy with the government and revote the government in is not really the issue since anyone can apparently make things happen and get the results that they want. Fabio will t- say, should I jump to my death? Or how high should I jump? A Fabio that amended the police act in one day? That's unfair to say. One man cannot amend the law. The National Assembly is Have you seen senators... M- Senator saying no, and Ababio will say yes. He's, he has done it on national television. There's nothing I'm saying that is not true that we have not seen. He doesn't even allow people to debate. People will raise their hands up in opposition. He doesn't listen to them. You cannot have a dangerous man like that, like Ababio in the National Assembly. What do you mean dangerous? Is that not getting too far, DG? Of course. Anybody that tells you, Ababio with his own mouth said that anything the president wants, they will do it. How can you have a legislature? How can you have a legislature that the head of a legislature is the head of the National Assembly? How can you have the head of legislature saying that that anything, anything the president, the legislature, legislature is supposed to act as a check and balance? They say it's in the interest of the Nigerian people. In the interest of the Nigerian people is why, how, why, why you amended the Police Act to extend the tenure of the Inspector General of Police at the detriment of DIGs, AIGs, uh, CPs. So people will not be marking time in the police. And you think this will not cause disaffection because of one man. If he, he, they've done it for the police, they're going to do it for the army. We have a situation in our hands where people are doing what is wrong and they are not, and there's no repercussion for it. And that's why somebody can steal 80 billion and there will be no repercussion. And he knows that there will be no repercussion. And that's why... I- Thank you for all the gullible uh, Christians we have in Nigeria. Yes, since much, I realize that uh, our problems are not uh, spiritual. Uh-huh. Our problems are rather physical. But we have Yahoo Yahoo in uh, different sectors. A lot of people think that uh, it's only those young boys who have been rendered jobless who press computer are Yahoo boys. But there is so many Yahoos. Yahoo start from government. Government is the original yahoo and we also have yahoo in police system we have yahoo in judicial system the real of god of all the yahoo is churches and mosques
this man go straight to the point i know a lot of you are going to cause yourself because you guys don't have sense pastors have stolen your conscience your mind your money and everything they made you unemployed they made you not have uh, your children in school they made your um uh, your road uh, unmotorable just the same thing governments are doing because they become the uh uncle tom you know when the white people left us thinking that we are not dependent we're not we're not dependent we don't have our independent they left us for some criminals who came you know as a pastor now look at what redeemed uh church the son did very stubborn very rude and nasty son of his he went from uh lagos to Kaduna state to meet arrow five he took a contract of eight billion eight billion the contract he didn't do it by the way the contract was also reviewed more money was added to it he didn't do it and the ESCC chairman president chairman is from redeemed church now the criminal minded uh, oh, uh, 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 um, you know um, redeemed church uh, son, very you know um, you know criminal minded this is a man who told us that he had breakfast with Nigeria uh, with, with God and Lord Jesus Christ our Savior I've never heard that before my question is, did you have tea with him or did you have a bye or you have a widow and uh, uh, and uh, Amala with, uh, with Jesus you didn't tell us that the same man again who told us that when he was going to America it was snowing because he was going to do uh, a crusade he stopped the snow this is weather it's only God that can stop the weather no man has ever done that before because the man has dementia and most of his followers also have dementia. They have lost their senses. They believe anything this old man will tell them. Even when he tell them to go and die, they will die. The man will tell you to be fast and shaking your head like mortal angel. You will shake your head. And you think that you are going to make heaven with that. You don't even enjoy this life that we are living. You are living. That we understand that yes, in life we're supposed to have water. We're supposed to have uh, food. You know, we're supposed to have uh, infrastructures and all that. We're supposed to work for it because God does not build bridges. This man, uh, <laughs> keep lying to people. You call him G.O. Now, the son took eight billion from Kaduna, where you have a majoris, where you have children who are out of school, where you have one of the highest uh, child child uh, 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 birth mortality. You know, where you have uneducated women who are supposed to be educated with this money and nothing happened because he went to court judiciary in Nigeria that is very corrupt you know with the help of his uh, church member in EFCC in the federal police office with all the connection he has to go and get an injunction so the money of Kaduna state can just go like that in vain now I ask myself question what shall he profit the son of a man to gain the world and lose his soul? Some of you motherfuckers who hasn't got it right. The white people gave you Christianity. So maybe that's why that doesn't even matter. You know, in Nigeria, you know, members of House of Red, the legislative arm of the government, in our constitution, there is a clause in there that these people can be recalled. They can the, be what? They can be recalled by their constituents. Okay. And because the legislative arm of the government right now is like a rubber stamp to the executive arm. So whatever the executive arm wants, the legislative arm basically, you know, I don't even know what they do, what they do in there. All they do is the I, 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 you are Bruce, I, I, and all of them go home. They, they get 21 million naira every, um, every month. Are you suggesting that everything is falling on the executive and the executive is having everyone do their bidding and that the executive is actually the creator of what we have today? With the presidential system that we are running, there is the legislative the executive and the judiciary. As of today, the current executive arm have the legislative and the judiciary in their pockets. In reality, these two other arms are supposed to be checkmating the executive. But as it stands right now, there's absolutely nothing that the masses can do about it. 
Because whatever that the essences of the executive arm is <laughs> going unchecked. Who is going to check it? The judiciary or the executive arm? So right. people like they can protest from now to infinity. Who will speak on behalf of the masses? No. Right. So the way I see it, you know, I, I have I will not call for for us to go on 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 protest because every protest that I have seen um, um, since Buari is in power or Buari was in power up till now, I've not seen any particular protest that has actually yielded anything meaningful. Even if they yield something, it's temporary. Okay. Right. So we can't be doing the same thing and expect a different result. So if we, so what can we do if we cannot, if you cannot get the government to listen to the people and make changes that will be favorable by protests? How do we then get them to respond? I think that people know what to do, but they have not. They've not made up their mind on what to do. Oh. I, I'm not going to say, but the people already know what they want to do. Is it that? It doesn't matter if there's an external influence. It doesn't matter if the other arms of the government is not checkmating the assesses of the executive. But when something, when you keep doing the same thing, you shouldn't expect anything to change. All Nigerians are doing is, oh, okay, we don't like what's going on. Okay, let's march on the streets. What happens? people will lose their lives and at the end like the one they just finished the hunger strike that they did what happened we are slammed with uh, a fuel increase and you know what the ripple effect of that fuel increase is going to do most nigerians yes. right now can barely barely eat once a day once they can barely eat once a day and you can see our executive arm they are buying yachts they are buying uh, uh, presidential planes. They are changing. Uh, they, are, they are changing houses. They are, you know, the other day I heard that um, uh, the executive arm is either republishing or rebuilding or whatever in Northern Barracks, the presidential house in Northern Barracks. Mm. Are we moving back to let you? Really? really? In oh, yeah. Lagos? Oh, I never yeah. heard that. So the question is: Are we moving back to Lagos? Are they moving the capital of Nigeria back to Lagos? Or oh, really? They are refurbishing the the, the... oh wow. Villa in Dotham in Dotham Barracks. So the question is, why are we spending all this money for nothing? Um politics, vanity upon vanity. But, yeah. but even besides that, a lot of expenses, we've been seeing all sorts of expenses, lists of expenses, um, lots of money for government officials, the legislature and all that. So it, that's why it looks as if they, they are not sensitive to the feelings of the people. In the midst of all this, you hear about uh, trips, lots of people going on the trips. And um, one of the things that we actually had sent in here was that there is a, a, a yacht that is um, said to be, uh, to have the Nigerian flag on it. I perched somewhere in France. Oh uh, yeah, the one that is in France, yes. No, yes. we don't really know who wants it, but a yacht that has a Nigerian flag on it means that it has to belong to the government, right? It's not gonna be an individual because there's no other flag on it. And um, I don't know, maybe it might be a private yacht. We don't really know that. It's very, very suspicious that a yacht, a yacht that day, you know, right? It's yeah. that has an Indian flag on it in Europe. So, yeah, like, like the person was saying that um, the, because the president had actually made mention of wanting one in the past. And now if there is one out there that has a Nigerian flag on it, and we know that the president visits France a lot. And that's why the suspicion is that that may be the one that the president is using and is sitting out there in France. True, it might not, you know, it might not be far back. These people are reckless. Our current 
executive arm and even the legislative arm, they are reckless. They're spending the money that we do not even have. Okay. They go ahead and borrow money and then they sell even our untapped crude oil to whoever they borrowed the money from. Dangote that even managed to, to build one of the best refineries in the world that is supposed to provide jobs to millions of Nigerians. And then the, the uh, what that job is going to create around the area that uh, that um, stop uh, the um, where it's the, located, the location, uh, right? It's it's we can't even imagine it. He's here. It's, he can barely get a crude oil from 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 um, from NNPT. You know, the, it, it's open. welcome, Miss. Welcome, Mister Mister G. Welcome. Hello? Did you put on your mic? Yes, your mic is on. Yeah, hello, I'm here. Yeah. Okay, welcome. Yeah, yeah we started, we just started not too long ago. Sorry about that. Uh, sorry for... Uh, yeah, sorry yeah, that's for okay. Sorry. That's okay. Sorry for the interruption, as you were saying. No, I said that the current executive is very, very reckless. They sell our crude without even letting us know the legislative arm that is supposed to check make the exercise they don't do anything about it and the guy that is supposed to provide a lot of jobs to nigerians is being starved of the required volume of crew that he needs it's like these people are they working against but 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 you know the refinery has started now producing fuel because this week, at least we we heard that um, we we saw that Dangote said they've started producing and he even brought the fuel and showed it to the public so that we can see that it's of um, of high quality as against what we had heard before that it was was of poor quality and so I'm not sure that the question now is not having access to the crude right. The problem now seems to be that what we've heard in the past, what we've heard in the past few days is that NNPC is saying that the that the, the, the fuel from Dangote may even have to go be sold outside the country because of the price. Whereas Dangote is saying that the, the NNPC is the one that will peg the price. And so who are we to believe now between the two of them? Okay. The only reason why Dangote is even in a paper right now is because he came out and cried out to the masses. Yeah, that that right. Not someone that actually calls for a press conference. He doesn't say much. But because of this refinery, in one week alone, Dangote has had like how many press conferences, at least minimum of three in a week. That tells you something. And because he couldn't get his way, or because probably the government couldn't get their way in, in the refinery, they're trying to frustrate. Even Dangote made mention of selling the, the same refinery that is not that is yet to be in production to an NPC, and it was already in discussion. For a man that spent the amount of money that he spent in building that refinery, and to talk about selling it, it tells you about the rot that we have in our government, in the enemies. It's unbelievable. I don't know how, I don't know if these people are working for the masses, or are they even trying to keep Nigeria as one, or are they trying to uh, uh, destabilize the country because every time they talk about when somebody makes a comment overseas, like the one that Abike Dabri is now chasing the great that is in Canada, in Canada, about a comment that she made, right? Yeah, this to me, this is like chasing shadows. This guy that is in the government with uh, his what's his name? Um. What's his name? The government. He's, 
he made more damaging racist comments and he continues to make it up to oh. now Abike Dabri, okay, when you present that to Abike Dabri, oh, he's telling you, oh, I'm, all I care about is people in diaspora. Even when you point at the people that made a comment about Igbo must go in Lagos, they had a Zoom. Did she even make a comment about that? No. But all she cared about is somebody that threatened. Do you think if that threat is because whoever that she said she's going to kill they are also canadians do you think that the canadian government is just going to lie low and say nothing someone making such threats against canadians do you think that we can probably we can say that because Dabiri was not working we can maybe we can't actually well we have to lay it on the shoulders of the government because she she's here representing the government isn't it so I was about to say that maybe she should take that blame personally because that's that I was going to say that's a personal call, but it, it's not because she's representing the government. And so that brings us to another issue of the issue of tribalism, because the excuse that she's she cares about the people in diaspora and she's she can't deal with the people in Nigeria right now doesn't really hold water because the person who actually started the problem where this woman responded, the lady who responded about poisoning or that uh, Yoruba people was responding to some, something that someone of another tribe had said, and that person was threatening to poison Igbos and to kill Igbos. But Abika Dabiri conveniently seemed to have forgotten that and gone after only this woman. You know, Because when I heard that this woman had said this thing, I, I, I actually felt irritated. I, I felt, why should people be continuing to push this tribalistic thing, even though I am Igbo myself, I felt that this is very wrong and she should be corrected for that. Only to now hear that she was responding to something that someone else said. We have someone else here with us who is of Yoruba origin. Would you want to respond to this conversation? Hello? Oh yeah, my name. Yes. Hello? Yes, would you want to say something? Uh, as we... yeah. About the tribalism tribal, tribal stuff, right? Yes. Really, I actually didn't follow the the trend properly. Mm. I only got to know about um, the Canadian lady that you you know that you post you posted something about recently. Mm. I actually didn't follow the the story properly because I I I knew this was going to travel far because uh, it has to do with uh, you know people at the, at this time of where uh, where Tinubu is in power, you know, the travel, the tribalism card has always been played from the onset. So I try mm. not to, you know, make any comment on uh, on social media about it because I I tend to want to be careful when it comes to stuff like mm. this. So I'm not, I can say I'm not really very familiar with the story. Really, really. Oh, okay. You're not very familiar with it. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So it brings me to another thing. I said, um, let me see, people have said, one second. So I've heard people say that Yorubas are silent over the issues in the country because they won't raise their voices as it is their tribesman who is in power. Okay. Right? And I say, yeah. you hmm. think, you think oh, yeah, so? Let's, let's talk about it, yes. Okay. But, but I have noticed that it's not all Yorubas who are actually happy with what is happening. And it's not all Yorubas who are keeping quiet. I think there is a man, Mr. Faro, what's his name? Faro Timi, right? It is, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. That's a man and he's very vocal. Yeah, he's very vocal. He's always been like that. Uh, you see the issue with um, tra tribalism and, uh, and Yorubas here. If you really take a, a, a good look at it from the beginning, you will know that um, those that are really playing the tribal cards are the illiterates, are the, I mean, the, the people, the lower cadre, cadre of the Yoruba, Yoruba race. You, you think so? You will highly, you know, get, yeah, yeah, yeah. Except uh. those that have affiliations, affiliations with the party, or they are probably going to gain directly or indirectly. indirectly. 
Okay. You can't see an enlightened Yoruba man. But I think Wale Shoyinka is, is one of such. Wale Shoyinka is one of such because... Wale Shoyinka is, is uh, Tinubu's friend. Okay. Wale Shoyinka is Tinubu's friend. And some That's notable uh, uh, men of God, some notable men of God, some well-known men of God of your bad descent. Such, such as, such as, give me, give me, give me. Such as Adeboye. Adeboye has, Adeboye's, uh, you know, whose wife is, uh, is, uh, is, is what's it called? Uh, uh, is, how do I put it? Uh, I'm actually is sorry, a I, member of said, I said men of God, sorry, not men of God, gods of men, sorry, because I know those people are not men of God. <laughs> Remy Tinubu is a pastor in in uh, Redeem. Oh, oh, I forgot that that was supposed to be a pastor. No wonder. Okay, so you see the people that we have who we call pastors in Nigeria. Okay, I forgot that one. All right. So that is expected, you know. It's an interesting I reminder. Your, Tinubu, Tinubu is not is not speaking for the Yorubas. He's speaking for the low the lower cadre of the of the Yoruba people. That's 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 it. That's right. That's why LP almost took over, over Lagos. Because majority of Yorubas in Lagos actually voted uh, voted for LP. Okay. That's that's the fact. What do you want to say about that? I'm just I'm happy to hear uh Mr. T uh saying but uh, I'm happy to hear this from 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 a Yoruba person. Why? Uh, no, because it's even when you go on social media, right? Like him, I try not to get involved in in tribal war, that the online tribal war, because some of them are riddled with a lot of lies or with a lot of. Uh, inconsistencies and it can degenerate to something that um, you may not like because I, I have noticed that this current uh, dispensation, this uh, uh, Tinibu about administration, they go online looking for people to go after. Oh. Instead of actually doing the job that they are elected, elected uh, in vote, <laughs> they do. It's because, me think of narcissists, the word that everybody uses now, because they're always afraid that you're going to be talking about them, so they're always on the lookout. The person who is doing something wrong is one who is afraid. They're always listening. And the thing is, they don't even know when someone is giving them a constructive criticism. They don't want you to talk, they want to gag you. Not that they don't care, or they don't even understand what is constructive criticism, or they don't even want to. Their objective is not to fix the problem. Now, multiple problems, you have an idea. They said that Nigerians have multi dimensional poverty. I don't know if that thing has actually something, you know, when you think about it, multi dimensional poverty, what is the poverty that most countries do not experience. A country like Nigeria that is, I call it filled with milk and honey. I love Nigeria. I believe I've told you this before. I love Nigeria with all my heart. But you know, when you see a country that you love so much being disgraced, being raped, the other day they were saying that some Chinese companies go around Europe seizing some of our property. And you can never hear such from our Nigerian press. Even the press are the worst. Because all they all they carry all along is propaganda. Maybe a few of them are saying working. You can never hear such from Nigerian press. And that is why nobody even listens to them anymore. Nobody even goes online to check them out. When I was growing up in Nigeria, oh goodness me, I remember is it um uh daily daily times, Tuesday, Tuesday Daily Times. That was when we were searching for jobs, right? We rushed to the news uh, newspaper stand to get that Tuesday 
same time. My daddy used to buy like three different newspapers every single day. Uh. Right? And these days, nobody even check them out because all they carry along is just propaganda and praises. You know? Look, don't get me wrong. Tinibu might be trying his best. Like BDM said the other day, you were very dark man. What did he say? Um, I think we were two or three days ago about Sokoto state government, right? We also need to focus on our governors as well because these people, some money that I don't know, Tinibu's media guy that are doing the letter that just recently resigned. They are not good in saying the good things that Tinibu's government is doing. Do you know any of the good things that the government is doing? Well, for a fact, he gave uh, a lot of money I, I to, like the, to, hear that too. to the governor. He I gave a lot of money. He gave a lot of money. He gave a lot of money. Right? No, he gave a money to the governors. None of them mentioned it. Hmm. He gave them a lot of money for the palliative. None of the governors mentioned it. They didn't even say anything about it. Mm. Right? And yet you see and, and he kept on with it. Huh? He kept he kept doling money, doling money out to the governors, knowing full well that they are not going to do anything about it. Look, um, uh, remember, remember that the separation of powers, right? There's so much that a president can yeah. do that he cannot interfere. So how did we find out? How did we find out? Yeah. <laughs> people got to say something our press wouldn't carry it some of the governors came on air and started mentioning it because they are people the only reason why the governor that even stealed the bills is because his people put pressure on him which people i believe is is kind of state who put pressure on him for what you don't you don't understand what's going on in Kano State? Kano State is the only state that has two MAs. All right. Right? So the other faction also have their own powers as well. So in order for them to say what they have to say, they have to put pressure on the governor and the governor say voice it out. Okay. It's not all about don't get me wrong. You know, everything that we're doing, Tinibu is not gonna be the one to come and construct that made Sokoto State to tell us that they used 1.2 billion, 1.2 billion naira to maintain, to maintain 25 boroughs, not to build a new borehole, to maintain. And we're gonna blame Tinibu on that one as well. Can I come in? Sorry, please. Yes. All these, uh, all these policies, all these uh, attempts, you know, to to dollar money has been done by Buhari the same thing, the same way. Buhari also gave governors money in billions. True. The same the thing happened. Money as well, yes. The same thing happened. And Tinubu, you know, had to know. I, I don't know. I, continue to do it in the same, in the same way. What do we call that? He knows these governors are not going to do anything about it. And he, kept well, he's not, and he, and he was a governor himself in the past. So he has experience and knows I how know. things work. So how do, you, how do you keep on with something that you know has never worked and is never going to work? And you kept on with it? Remember, Please. I, I think this is, this is all about um, politics. Remember, Tinibu had been the president. I believe he wants to run for uh, 2027, right? And all this money you see him getting out to all the governors, and he does it turns a blind eye over all of them. It's for the fact that he used their support in 2027. And if the uh, uh, action is going to be rigged, like we can practically stole River State. So you've just answered it. You've answered his question. I, so. That is the reason why he's doing it. But we, the masses as well. Okay. Right? Because you can't just be looking. It's not, yes, people say forward ever. 
you have to blame you know a uh, 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 weekend like that music i don't know boss if you understand what i'm saying when you attack Tinibu, you also have to look at the governors you also have to look at the local government chairman it's our money that is being given to these people to do something there are some rural roads we're talking about food insecurity in nigeria today right some of these food crops they come from the rural areas it's not Chinibu, it's not the president that will build accessible roads to these people and when these people do not have accessible roads what do you think happens to the crops or the food that they produce hmm. going to put the money they're going to add whatever costs they incur in transport system of that goods don't get me wrong okay the fuel price is okay it's something else but if nothing is being done to those local government chairmen or the governors these all these are indirectly affecting us that we at the end of the day turn around and ban the presidency i'm not saying that i'm not here to campaign for the president they have their own blame as well but the blame goes around to everybody these people are not okay why do we have them if we cannot blame them that's a good one yeah. these criminals are giving they get their monthly allowance their monthly uh, 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 money that he gives to them like the ones that are from the niger delta they also get uh, all kind of money and then the ones they have uh, some security they also have uh uh security allowances they have been given what do they do with all that money buy some expensive wristwatches those are very good points thank you for bringing those up um, yeah can we talk finally about the one that is really staring us in the face now we uh, pump prices and what is happening with between NNPC and Dangote now that we don't even know who to who to believe and what is going to happen because Dangote has said that by the end of this week by the end of this week that they should have been ready that they were waiting for NNPC to give them the go ahead but NNPC now turned around to say that they are not the ones who are going to that are not the ones who are going to tell Dangote how much is going to sell the fuel and now people are buying fuel at uh, a thousand naira and above per liter and because of everything is high. What do you guys think about that? I I I spoke with a friend of mine a couple of um, hours ago. He lives in Benghazi, Libya. Yeah. yeah. I asked, uh, yeah. He said uh, the cost of uh, fuel uh, fuel in Libya is uh, like um, you know, uh, how do I put it? It's cheaper than the cost of a bottle of water. Ooh. Exactly. I said you should Is Libya producing anything? Is Libya importing I, I it, No, no, they, they have they have fuel now. They have uh they have okay. um uh, what's it called uh, crude oil. Okay. They have crude so oil they're here. producing mm. they're producing themselves. They are pretty, exactly. He said the cost wow. of uh uh, water, water is more expensive that than uh, you know a little mm -hmm. a little for cost of liter of food. You know. And I I said you should please uh, try to go to, uh, to 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 the nearest filling station to do a, you know a, a photo shoot. Just give me a, you know so that I can confirm. Oh, and wow! It, did it. So what is it that Libya is doing? So he sent it to you. making them. He sent it. Yeah. Oh my God! What is it that Libya is, Libya is doing that Nigeria cannot do? What is what is really going on? What is going on? But do know. you think that they care? Do you think that they Come care again? because yeah, yeah? Do you think that they care because um, somebody has sent a message that NNPC is practically owned by Tinubu? I don't know about that. We're talking about one group, and yeah. So do you? So if it's possible, and I know that I've also heard that. So if there is a connection between Tinubu, NNPC, Rwando, and this crude oil and the fuel, is it possible? NNPC has been there before Tinubu became president. So that's that can be true. 
Right. That can be true. Probably it has um it has some um, you know some shears or whatever. I don't I wouldn't know, but that can that can can be confirmed. I don't think so. Don't think so. so what, what is, is it that Libya? Yeah. What is it that Libya is doing that's making their fuel so you know affordable that we cannot do? Please, I need someone to you know to to, I mean, to let me let, know that, please. Let me jump in here, okay? Yeah, it is. It is very simple. I think uh, I'm not. I'm not saying this lightly. Nigeria is being run by a gang of I don't know what to call them. Okay, because they don't care. Hmm. Nigeria. Who doesn't care? Whoever are the people that are running Nigeria. Hmm. What? Who are the people running Nigeria? If not uh, the Tinubu yeah. administration. When you check on India, even India has some minor wars going around on in Libya. And yet, people can still get one or two things they need. Nigeria, there's nothing that's happening in Nigeria, yet we cannot. Nigeria has four refineries. Four refineries. None of them is functioning. None is functioning. And are they being maintained? Come to think of it. Always. There is always a budget for them in every budget. That How many be. years now? Why is all that money being spent? The question you ask yourself, look, there is no country that has been industrialized if they do not have a steel, a steel company. Nigeria has a Jakuta steel company. Up till now, Jakuta is not working. Up to today, but yet there are people working in Ajokuta getting salaries every day, every month <laughs> for decades. Functional. Now, our refineries, do you know when we have four refineries in Nigeria, if assuming they are functional, do you think we're not going to have these fuel surplus in Nigeria? Even on Dangote, one refinery by Dangote. Okay, Dangote came out and said, and then PC first came out and did all the abracatabra when they said, oh, they don't have money. They don't do this. They don't have that. The, the money that Nigerian government even borrowed to invest in Dangote refinery, the 20, I believe it's 22% or about that. Nigerian government borrowed the money for that. When it's time for them to pay it, they couldn't even match up to that 22%. Yet we borrowed money to pay for that. And yet we couldn't. Now, Dangote, I don't know how Dangote settled it with them. Now, Dangote continued and completed his refinery. And yet, a lot of people are trying to sabotage Dangote to the point, I said it earlier, that Dangote even got to the point he made, he said NMPC should come and acquire Dangote refinery. He wanted to sell it. A man cannot sell his assets like that if nothing is going on behind the scene. Right? Now, Dangote, they settled that one as well. Dangote has gone around screaming and shouting. Dangote told us that and NPC is basically a mafia-run organization, right? A company as big as NPC cannot boast of a profit. For the past 10 years, NPC has never made profit. And the same MD <laughs> has remained the same MD. What does that tell you? Right, so why is he still the MD? That's a very good question. Usually when, a, when a company is not doing well, the MD or the CEO is the first person to go. Yes. Then what happens? He's there. Right? And why in God's name is our president the minister of petroleum? Why? Just like Buhari was. Just like Buhari was. Buhari started that madness. Right, and now we that is. I'm just answering your question. That is why we cannot. These people, you know, there's a level of greed it will get to. It is no longer greed, it's called wickedness. It's no longer greed because they, these people have they kept acquiring so much money, 
they kept acquiring so much money and it costs nobody there's no accountability there's no audit nothing happens look yes overseas it's not like uh, uh us canada australia it's not like there are no bad people but they make sure that you are accountable for any crime you commit if an ex-american president is today a convicted felon of 34 counts do you think such can happen in nigeria it can never happen so that is why you know it keeps happening dangote came out and said okay this is how much this is dangote is never telling us how much the cost to produce one petrol you can't even tell us because an npc has mandated him not to say it right and then pc actually came out and said oh um um dangote dangote uh the only the only reason because when they were talking about monopoly dangote yes. said okay you guys should come and buy everything yes but, and then set whatever price you guys want to set they yeah. turned around and said no unless you are selling this above a particular price why should you tell a man he's producing at a particular cost he's good for his own business right he's making more money yeah but you are not the one to do that okay now he has given you guys a leeway and it's okay you guys buy and set the price i'm not going to say how much it's going to cost me they know that no matter what the people will definitely find out because it's human beings that are working in dangote refinery the secret is going to be let out of the bag, you know, one day. People will know how much it's costing to produce those poor. And luckily for us, there is no other, there's no landing cost because originally they used to tell us there's a, uh, there's a, this amount of landing cost from, uh, you know, if they import the, uh, the, um, the fuel. Now there is no landing cost. Then why is why is still why is this still incentive? That is what I'm telling you. Why right. suspect? If you ask me, so who is going to be able? Who is going to check? Who is going to be able to check this thing that is happening? Who is going to, going to be able to check meet it? What, that is why I'm telling you. There should be separation of power between the executive, the legislative, and the judiciary. But the the legislative, but the legislative have the right to invite them go to for a pro but the question is will they do it no the masses themselves we have the constitutional right to sue dangote to court for him to come and tell us how much he's producing those uh the uh, uh the petroleum uh, products that's an interesting one sue dangote do you think the judiciary is going to come in your favor right because the judiciary the judiciary seems to be compromised and why are they not compromised they just, people just give them a 300 percent increase in salary meanwhile the seventy-five thousand that the labor has been begging they even plan to go on protest that never came to, <laughs> that never happened at the end of the day he has not even approved it legally so nobody's even receiving that 75,000. But he quickly signed the one for the judiciary. What does that tell you? It's yes. like a, a cabal. That is why I said, I don't know if these people are out to destroy Nigeria or to better Nigeria. So someone said, um, we are just, there's no point having any hope because we're not going to get anything whatsoever from the government because the government isn't even in control of the country. That sounds like what you're saying, actually. And the government seems to be arm twisted by other interests. So there is no way that the government would be working for the country. It's as if the government is against the country. That's what I said. The, the way they are working is against the country. They are putting policies that is against the country. So there is no hope for us. And that comes, that comes down to, that is part of the reason why religion is a problem. Because when people feel that um, something is being done to them and they cannot do anything about it, they now resort to keeping quiet and praying that God will come to their rescue. But 
does God come to rescue you when there's something that you can actually do by yourself? Right? <laughs> that is what Machiavelli, you know Machiavelli, Niccolo Machiavelli. Okay. Niccolo Machiavelli has yeah, one yeah, of yeah. his quotations. He said, God does not have to do everything for us in order not to take away part of his glory that is ours. Right, so the people who keep on, and in fact, we have all those gods of, of men who seem to be so, who are so powerful and they, they do all the fasting and praying and shouting and and everything that God cannot do does not exist. So I don't know how how people continue to believe in these people. And they are even the ones who will be telling you that your problems in Nigeria are spiritual. But then they use they use the physical to solve their own problems. And they'll be telling us that the problems in Nigeria are physical. Nothing, and, and they have more situations. Huh? There's nothing spiritual about the Nigeria's problem. Well, I think that there is a lot of spiritual issues, but um, we haven't even handled. We haven't handled there, anyone. There's no such thing as uh, there's no such thing as spiritual problem when it comes to solving simple issues that we as humans can solve. Uh huh. I agree with you on that one. Is only is only in Africa that we hear all these, you know. So we can say like that uh, the the religion and the gods of men in Nigeria are working hand in hand with whoever these people are that are keeping the country down. Because they are soaking the brains of the multitudes that are listening to them, soaking their brains in. Yeah? Oye, 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 Oye is building a church now. It's called, what's it called? Uh, an ark. The ark, yes. Yeah, whatever the, the ark or something. It's going to yes. work like, uh, you know, it's is, is massive. Unless so it's gonna yeah. like probably take a uh, uh, probably it it a hundred thousand you know I don't know whatever. And they will ask it. you why you are bringing that up. What has that got to do with what we're talking about? No, what I'm trying to say is that of what use is the church, a big church as mighty as that, right. when you can use the money you know to better the life of the people. No, what we want to, what I want to ask you is of what of what use is that church when the ones that you have now have not helped to solve the problems that we have? The country Anything. that is still churches, yes. Yeah. I, I, anyway, we see we seen with the events of the past few weeks that these are not even churches, these are shrines and the idols and the idol worshippers that are going there because these people are not talking about God. They are busy fighting over and fighting for their gods of men. So we now see that they're worshipping the men, they're not actually worshipping God. And I think that they are not realizing it. No, right? that's probably because of the reason why we are where we are, because we have turned our, our backs to God and we are focusing on, on those human beings. And so God has left us. Okay, there's something that you said. I I I, I want to differ a little bit from Tell me. yeah from, from that, right? Mm. There's something you said about about um somebody making a comment online about the only thing we have hope. About what? Hope. Somebody somebody said something, right? Yes. And when we look at that hope, right? Hmm. No, they, they usually say that religion is the hope, is the only hope of the hopeless. Opium of the masses, huh? But, mm -hmm. and, right? It's also that as well. Right? But it's actually the hope of the hope. The only hope of the hope? That's it. Religion. Sorry, I, I didn't get that. To put it. I didn't get that. Okay, religion. Hope of the hopeless. The religion is, is the, the hope only, of the hopeless. The hopeless. Okay, okay. That sounds about right. They're hopeless. We can't do anything. On protest, it doesn't change anything. Let me ask you guys, did you ever did it ever occur to you, any of you, that the religion that we have is is maybe we should suspect that religion? You know why I say so? Because the people who brought that type of religion to us are people who are benefiting from uh our believing that something is going to come and save us so it makes it makes mm -hmm. sense to that people are doubting that that is a true way of accessing god 
is it not possible that someone would wink someone and just sold that kind of story? Whereas there's another way to access God and you are just, everything you're doing is in futility. I just want you to take that home. Let's, let's, let's even say, please, sorry. Let's even say God wants to help. Can yeah. somebody please tell me how he's going to go about it? Is it that he's going to raise right. somebody that I don't it's know what, how God is always going to say? In, I don't Goliath. know. I don't understand. God probably is going to raise someone or is going to send angels. I don't understand. Please. I need some clarifications about that. We should ask, ask Adeboy. No, look. The question we should be asked. Look. Do we believe that is God? Hmm? Do we believe that is God? Yes. Of course. I do. Okay. So if you believe there is God, the only difference in all religions is they are using different channels to reach God. What are we talking about here now? No, I'm, 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 I'm trying to make a point. Okay. Okay. They are using different channels to reach God. Deeds, Christianity deeds, Islam deeds, uh, Buddhism, Buddhism, all of them. They are using different channels to reach that of whoever that is God. Okay? okay. Now, yeah. if you believe that religion is the hope of the hopeless, we in Nigeria do not have any other hope our religion. Whichever way we use to reach God. Mm. Look, wherever there are good things, there are also bad bad people. Wherever there are good people, there will always be bad people. So, the men of God that are there in Nigeria today, there are good ones and there are bad ones. I'm not in support of... That's a good one, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, right now, as a Nigerian, living in Nigeria, the only way we can actually be sane. The only way we can remain sane in Nigeria today is to even be closer to our God. The yeah, only but, way but what helps me in my spirit? What form does that take when people have have misunderstood the idea to mean being closer to the to the man that they are looking at in front of at the pulpit? How does that because it's, it's it's going to take a lot of brain rewiring. It is because the, the you know the the most of the bad people have the largest microphone. I don't know, right? We're right? saying the same thing. And, and, and if you check very well, most people are are wired in the way that what they see quite often. Yes. What they would become. Yes. Right? And these bad actors acting as men of God are actually capitalizing on that and themselves. I have asked somebody one day, and uh, you know, I said, in God's world, do somebody that does not have a company, does not have uh, anything, will come out to own private jets. Uh, I think you are looking for trouble when you say that because it is, it is, it is in the, at least I'm saying something that is on the press. They report 80 acres of land. It's not that I, I, I um, quarrel with that, but I'm even, I mean, what I'm trying to say is even if that were to be the case, that a man of God, let's say that is that they're eating from that because that is all that they do, even though that's not all you're supposed to do because I have relatives who, because they were jobless, went to become pastors. So that's aside. But let's just say that the person is eating where he <laughs> works, right? Um, the issue is, have your private just and know that, but 
when you are eating fried food, you are now you are, you are basically swallowing. It's no longer eating. You are swallowing. No, no, you let's you, let's even say that. I, I I think I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind you having a million private jets, but be effective with something. But if I see only lies and lies and lies, I, it tells me that I don't. Those people do not even believe in God. These people. These that people church. Are church yes. is run by the Pope. The hmm? Pope is in Rome. Catholic hmm. Church is more than one billion all over the world. The Pope hmm. flies Air Italia. Air hmm. Italia. Anyway. So, no man of God would come to me and tell me to have one, two, three private jets. And, uh, and you want me to believe that you are a man of God. You, something is wrong. No, the, the saddest part is even the, the attitude with which they say it. It's a, in a boastful way, you know. So, And how can I be talking in that boastful way? And people are still looking at the person. That, that's why I say that, that I don't worship us. Because they can't even see through the person doing things that are not even of the fruits of of God. One, and one, yet, who, one who is actually called, one who is actually called by God and has the Holy Spirit will automatically lose the thirst for material material things because the realm at which he will operate will be beyond that. All those things will not matter. No, they will come. If you are really they called by God, the response to that will be that material, is mat you know, the response to that will be that you that you are going to live like a child of a king. That's why so that's why I don't even want to talk about that. But but don't come boasting about it and telling me I'm a billionaire, I'm a billionaire. Do you know who I am? I have three private jets. People are suffering in COVID, like Suleiman. People are suffering in COVID, and I was busy enjoying myself. I bought a, a jet. And I don't know how the people can see through those things and not be repulsed by someone who is so boastful and who is so insensitive to the deaths of thousands they, of people. They even boastful. held him. They held him. They, and they were clapping. They, they held him. It's just, it's hmm. um, it's so strange. It's like the people are under a spell. And I know that they're under a spell because they got sucked into this thing. But anyway, if, I think... Well, <laughs> Let me talk about the act. So I, I was looking at somewhere, somebody said a comment on, on that. He said, he said, don't worry. It's a comment, you know, in the commentary uh, section. Somebody said, don't worry. That act will turn into an African O2 arena. Oh, <laughs> African O2 arena. So that that, person was yeah. in North America. Because with time, you know, I don't think um, religion is going to... Oh. You know, once they start seeing a decline, trust me, this is a big mm. investment. Because if you look at it, the that guy built a wild. he built a hotel around it. That is going to be a while. Mm. You know why? It's going to take a while before people will, before multitudes will stop flocking to church. Because when you have somebody who calls himself a man of God, who is selling miracle fish, miracle key, miracle hook, miracle water, miracle oil, miracle perfume, miracle everything, and people are still hailing him and saying that this is my 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 spiritual father their brains have been scooped um, out so and there are many of them so so it's going to take a long time i think people are thinking the ch churches will decline in nigeria i think it's going to take a long time when you have many people who are still believing in the will, person it, like it, that it will ha happen it's, it's happening already is uh, gradually come we're we are getting there but it's still going to take a while yes Yes, yes. Mm. I'm just saying that I think it will take a long time because if you are born into it, hmm? Hmm? something, something. I'm just. Are we, are we in rapture? <laughs> um, at least for you know, Jim Jones was how many years ago? So it's possible, but I don't think that just because this is happening now, you are saying because of these evil men, right? Is it uh, 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 now or is it that these false prophets they've been there for a long time are as 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 men of god they've been there for a long time it's jeremiah that brought it's jeremiah that exposed all of them <laughs> he's the one that exposed them yeah, because yeah. of all these because the other fato he bought the other time yeah, he, did, he did he did those things they were enough for people to shout but people were still thinking, touch not my anointed. But when someone like Jeremiah came on the scene, 
and started doing all these things that he's doing that even a seven-year-old would say, look, get out of here, my friend. So that's that kind mind. of... <laughs> that's what really... Yeah. <laughs> that's what really brought it. Made it like undeniable. Made it undeniable that these are, these are, these are people who are suffering from insanity that are, have taken control of, of the pulpit. That's what made it undeniable. Yeah, was the one that, that broke the, the camera's back. Yes. Re is supposed to help the people because like i said it's the hope of the hopeless now people that have those microphones at the booth yeah instead of supporting the people and you You're know joking. Stop that it. their plight gets no, to the appropriate authorities the other day who said that uh we should pray for our president the reason they can't do it is because pray for because, us. because they are benefiting from the poverty mindset of the people. So they can't, they're not even there in the first place as people who believe in God. So so making this suggestion that they should help, pray, care, and all that, you're wasting your saliva because you're directing those thoughts to a thief has come to your house. Do you can you imagine the, the thoughts that you're having that a thief should be there to do something in favor of the house? It's just not possible because those people are not, those people do not believe in God. Those people who are standing there at the pulpit do not even believe in God. You know, it's obvious to you. It's obvious to me. So we're wasting our time thinking like that, you know? And and then when, if you even talk, their worshippers will come at you. So When they say, God's not my anointing, they come online, they start, you know, bashing the person and all that. I have seen cases whereby the people that are actually telling them the truth tends to back off. Right? Why do you have to back off? Why do you have to? No, um, I would back off because, you know, I talked about this thing for a long time. And when I was talking about it, I actually thought that I was uh, talking to people who had a little bit of uh, gray matter. But when I realized that I was talking to people whose brains have been scooped out, it's like I'm wasting my time. What is the point? What is the point? Do you understand? Um, here is the thing. If you're born into something, you, you, you we could have been Buddhists today and we could have been um, worshippers of Krishna. We could have been anything else. But whatever you're born into, it's really hard to come out of it. So if these people were born into families where and the society all around them, they believe in just, you know, you cannot talk. If you try to talk to the person, the person thinks that you're trying to lead them astray. Do you understand what I'm saying? So why am I going, I'm going to make an enemy of you? Even when I tell you that your, your, your man of God is being like, it looks like the man needs evaluation because he's selling stones and everything. He's selling you every single thing. If he sells this one today and he's supposed to take care of you and then he sells another one tomorrow. When you tell someone that kind of thing and the person still doesn't see the sense in it, yeah. you even the, even the Bible will tell you that you are being foolish by continuing to try to advise someone like that. Things like this? Yeah. Hmm? What? I can't hear you. No, sorry. No, I didn't say anything. I'm just... Um... So that's it. So I think that um, even you yourself, like if somebody is coming, to, if you're advising someone and you see that the person isn't taking the advice, you are going to, at a point, be like, okay, whatever you, you get from the path down which you're going, good, good for you. Then when you get your fingers burned, then you eventually learn. So, well, that's the way that I'm taking it. I, I was even taking it seriously before, but now I'm actually laughing because I'm like, this is like, this is crazy. If I continue like this, I have to now blame myself for being so ridiculous as to continue to talk like this in the midst of people who, who's, who, who are not even reasoning like normal human beings. I will now be the crazy one. <laughs>